It's time for the final showdown with Dracula, but standing between us and him is the clock tower and a small army of repurposed vampire bats. That is, the stage one boss. Most of the time I frown upon old boss enemies being used en masse, but I give this a pass because it's pretty clear that you're not supposed to stick around and fight them. In fact, doing so is a terrible idea, as you see there. These guys are just there to set the mood and make you know that, yeah, the uh, Lord of Vampires is coming up. All you really have to do is run straight by them. On to the clock tower. Now, if you've played other Castlevania games, uh, you might associate the clock tower with things like Medusa heads and rotating platforms and extremely difficult platforming in general. Uh, none of those things are present in this game, actually. That started in uh, Castlevania 3, actually, where the clock tower was the second stage, and completely optional for that matter. We start off uh, with some skeletons. While I'm having a little bit of trouble dealing with the stairs and the related controls, really the stairs are the worst part of the entire game. And when staircases are the worst part of your entire game, you've actually got a pretty good game. But uh, instead of Medusa heads, we've got those birds dropping flea men from the latter half of Stage 4. They're incredibly, incredibly obnoxious. But if you look closely, there's actually a method to their madness. And if you time it carefully, you can just walk completely unopposed right through them, like so. And that's actually going to do it for the clock tower. Stage 6 is extremely short which is merciful because the boss fight is extremely long. Just like in pretty much every other Castlevania game, you have one last staircase to wake up, or er, to walk up, before Dracula's Keep. No uh, hidden cache of treasure here, unfortunately. Uh, just a cross that I skipped because I'd rather have the triple shot. And uh, some hearts and some money. Money doesn't really buy you much at this point. But you want to get as many hearts as you possibly can. I'm going to need them for the second stage of the boss fight. In the first stage of the boss fight, Dracula is invincible except for his head. And he repeats this pattern endlessly. He'll teleport somewhere on the screen, lift up his cape, and after about half a second, three fireballs will come out. One goes up, one goes down, one goes in the middle. There are a few ways you can avoid this. Uh, for one, if you jump high enough, when he opens up his cape, the fireballs will sail all directly over your head. He can actually aim uh, the spread of fireballs, which is kind of interesting. And the other main way to avoid it is to whip some or all of them. You have to time your whip exact for... Uh, basically, you want to press the button right after you see the cape go up. And if you do it that way, you'll probably get lower two fireballs. And that'll be enough to keep you safe, because the third one is always up. And will get too high. Other than that, it's just a matter of uh, repetition. And the first form of Dracula goes down. But of course there's got to be another one. I'm not exactly certain what this is supposed to be. Maybe a primordial vampire. But it doesn't look like any Dracula I know. And of course, I've completely forgotten to fight, how to fight him at this point. Uh, don't do what I'm doing right now. Just flinging holy water at his feet and whipping him is not going to get it done in any sort of reasonable fashion. His weak point is his head. Much like the first form of Dracula, it's just that he's not invincible completely this time around. And I completely forgot that, and I have been just flinging holy water willy-nilly, and that's just not gonna do. What you actually want to do if you have holy water here is uh, time your throws. So you throw one, and then you jump up and hit him in the head, and you throw one and jump up and hit him in the head. And once I finally started using that technique, I was in no danger of death at all. And that is going to do it. That is Castlevania. Sit back and enjoy the very faked credits. Castlevania was, of course, made at a time when companies were very worried that people would steal each other's programmers, and as such, none of them are actually credited as themselves. 
Castlevania's kind of funny because it takes a bunch of movie stars and messes with their names a bit. Of course, that means Simon Belmont, as is later retconned in the future games. But uh, that's going to do it. Thanks to everybody who was watching. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And if you get a chance to play Castlevania, absolutely do.